Hello, I'm Scott with Adrenaline Fueled Firearms. Welcome back. Uh, this is a kind of a follow-up video to my initial bolt-action rifle video with considerations of selection of a bolt-action rifle. I'm going to go a little bit deeper into caliber choice, some of the reasons behind whys, what's and wherefores, a little bit more about my specific baby because, well, you know, I just picked it up and I want to talk about it. It won't be an actual review. I haven't put a lot of rounds through it. It's going to be a general chat video. Uh, we'll do some shooting reviews, shooting videos, full-on after-action stuff, AARs. We'll do those downrange later down the calendar when it's not effing cold and snowy. Um, <laughs> and the Midwest, you got to love it. So let's talk about rifles. So, bolt-action rifles. Your biggest consideration is going to be caliber. Honestly, caliber will inform all the follow-on decisions with the, well, no, not with the exception of optics, including optics, because they're, if you're shooting 22 long rifle, you don't need a 7x33,000 dollar loophole scope. You don't. It's a $500 rifle with a $3,000 scope on it. You know what? Like the pink rifle comment, I'm not going to judge any lifestyle choices you may make. Fill your boots. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. You know what? As long as you're being safe and having fun, get some. That's all I can say. But caliber is going to be the biggest consideration when dealing with a, your first bolt-action rifle purchase. How easy is the ammo to get? Okay, how easy is the ammo to get? That might put you in 308 right there. 308, pretty easy to get. Been around since 1952-ish. Pretty sure you can pick it up at <clears throat> that one <clears throat> massive national chain that refuses to sell assault rifles and ammunition now. 6.5 Creedmoor is right up there. Newer chambering, popular, readily available. 350 Legend, that AR caliber I was talking about. It's not an AR caliber. It's designed for bolt-action rifle as far as I know. It also works in ARs. Maybe you want to go that route, so you can go both ways. Maybe you've got five grand in your pocket. You want to go 338 Lapua Magnum. Dude, do it. Get some. Have fun with it. Enjoy the sport. But do not purchase a rifle for any price, in a caliber, for any price that you're not going to be able to afford to go out and shoot. Or you do not have an area where you can safely go and shoot. Consider your caliber before purchase. Try other people's stuff, see if you like the recoil, see if it's beyond your marksmanship skills ever foreseeably in the future because you won't take the time to shoot over a thousand rounds of that specific caliber to get the maximum out of it as far as its accuracy at longer ranges. You know, Consider your activity level and desire and your purpose before you select your caliber because all those things will lead into caliber selection which leads into everything else so that said next you're probably going to start looking at your various manufacturers do you necessarily want to go high-end right off the jump some mid caliber like for instance 300 PRC relatively hard to get good long-range accuracy 30 caliber bullet I'm not sure you can really go wrong there. I'm a big fan of 30 caliber bullets. I like them. So, there are just too many options to discuss in one video. Caliber's your big one. Brand is next. Once you have your brand down, you're going to want to look at all the options available. We're going to go with Savage because I literally just went through this process myself literally last week. Purchased this thing. This thing is a Savage. 110 Magpul Hunter in OD Green. I went with the OD Green, not necessarily because OD Green was my favorite chassis caliber that I wanted, but because the OD Green model came with a 22 inch barrel instead of an 18 inch barrel, threaded barrel, and a factory blue printed bolt. Which means that theoretically, in the end, it should be a more accurate rifle than the black Magpul Hunters. We'll see. 
uh, the price difference from where I purchased was a whopping 25 bucks. The MSRP difference, I believe, is closer to 50 to 75 between the black and green Magpul hunters with different barrel lengths, etc. Optic is probably one of your big considerations. Uh, it is, as I said, heavily based on your caliber. I went with 6.5 Creedmoor. I like 6.5 Creedmoor. It's not the Magic 30 caliber Freedom Pill, but it is a more modern round. It does have a little bit more potential. I do my own reloading. I don't necessarily have more reloading options in bullets, powders, etc. But it's got some interesting things going with it. And I want to play with it a little more than I plan on playing with 308, so I picked this rifle. My optic of choice was a Sig Sauer 6 to 16, excuse me, 4 to 16 Buckmasters scope, which was on sale for significantly less than its MSRP, which is why I picked it up. Now, the way this one is mounted is not technically correct. These are high mounts on a pick rail. Pick rail, by the way, was sold with the rifle. I need low mounts for this scope. You want your scope to be as low to your barrel without making contact as possible. Give yourself at least an eighth of an inch. Uh, my correct parts are on the way. Part of the reason I haven't shot it. It's not sighted in, it's not zeroed, it's, it's a waste of bullets. This chassis also came with the Accuracy International Magpul bottom metal. I say bottom metal because bottom metal is the industry standard name for that component depending on whether you're flush mount magazine, AICS magazine, someone else's magazine or uh, flip open bottom metal or it's solid and you just press crap in through the top and eject it the same way. The reason I threw the flying air quotes on bottom metal was it's Magpul. It's not metal. It's bottom plastic. That said, uh, years of experience as a mechanic, notwithstanding modern polymers or anything else, I'm not using metal mags. I would not recommend, for longevity's sake, putting metal magazines in a plastic bottom metal. Now, is that really going to affect a lot of people? No, I'm obsessive compulsive. Metal on plastic is just a bad idea. Merry Christmas. It's a moving part. It's just going to wear out faster. I want to own this thing at least as far down the road as I've owned my 308 that I discussed in my last video. You know, 20, 30 years down the road, I still hope to have this thing. Might not be shooting 6.5 Creed more. As a matter of fact, uh, hopefully in the near future, I'm going to be shooting 277 Fury. More about that later. So the Magpul furniture, stock, whatever you want to call it, has the advantage of having your adjustable cheek rest. No spares came with mine. Adjustable length of pull by adding spacers here. Three came with mine. I've already installed some to get my length of pull correct. And as I said, your Magpul chassis has your Magpul bottom plastic. And you have M-Lock attachment points. You have two on the bottom, three on each side. And this plays into the next factor, accessories. So accessories are technically an optics and accessory. I don't really think so because how do you shoot accurately without some kind of optic? Right. So your accessories. Bipods, flashlights, lasers, range finders, grips. It's not quite where the AR is with being able to find everything, including an automatic butt scratcher, but it's still a pretty significant list of items. Um, Arca rails. I want to put an Arca rail under this because I do photography. Look, holy crap, I'm doing this on a camera. What? Yeah, I like photography. So <laughs> it's kind of like, oh. Hmm. That's, marker reels reels were done by photographers and now they're putting them on rifles and I already own a tripod. Fair enough. I am still going to do a bipod. Uh, 
UTG and several other companies make side mount M-lock bipods that fold up, down, back, and at several different angles. I have one on uh, my LR308 and 308, and I really like it, and I want to try it on this, even though the angles aren't flat on these M-lock or on these Magpul stocks. They're kind of angled a little further, so it's going to kick the legs out even further. I may not like it, but we're going to try it out. So um, I think that's all we're going to talk about right now. I just wanted to give the bolt action rifles a fair shake with at least two videos to match up with my AR videos. Um, think about all the things that go into these purchases. Think about safety, think about training, think about how many rounds you plan to put down range. All these things play into your research and what chunk of your budget you actually want to spend on one of these and how much time out of your life you actually want to spend on this. There's absolutely nothing wrong with trying it out and putting it away because you weren't too fond of it but you want to have it it's your life man live it enjoy it have fun with it come back and watch more of my youtube videos like and subscribe to my channel click the notification button and i hope that you see me in future videos on this channel thanks a lot have a great day